how you doing guys and welcome to another episode of 2M Kim. How are you doing? Nice to see you. In this episode, I've been asked to do a video on when to use the Q equals MC delta T formula. A lot of students struggle with using that formula or not struggling when to use it, struggling when to apply it. So here we're going to talk about when you need to apply it and then look at an example. Let's go. Okay, so when to use Q equals MC delta T. So a number of students, they don't know when to use it, but we're going to go through how you use it. So Q equals MC delta T is used in a calculation. Now energy Q is equal to the mass in grams times by the specific heat capacity generally of water, 4.18 joules per degree per, per gram per degree Celsius. Now they could do Kelvin or degrees, it doesn't matter. It's just how much the temperature changes. And what it is, is when they're measuring the temperature of water. So they're measuring a temperature change of water. Now the assumption that we use here is if we have a solid and we add it to a known amount of water, we assume that the mass of the water stays the same. That is one of our important assumptions because the mass of the solution is going to be used in that formula. It's going to form the M for the mass. So we make that assumption every single time. So here's an example where we're asked to determine the enthalpy change of methanol. We're given an amount of methanol, it's being burnt and the heat released, the temperature increased from 24.5 to 45 degrees and they've told us that we have 50 centimetres cubed of water. So we use the Q equals MC delta T to figure out the energy released while we burnt this methanol. Now our mass, our mass is the mass of the water. So in this case we have 50 centimetres cubed of water. Now, one centimetre cubed of water weighs one gram. So we assume that we have 50 grams here, 50 grams of water. We multiply that by the specific heat capacity of water, and then we multiply that by the temperature change, the difference between the temperatures. In this case, it's a positive number. If it's a negative number, just use the difference. Don't use the negative. Because what we're getting out here is an energy, and our energy is in joules. We can never have a negative energy, so here we've got 4.29 kilojoules. I've changed it to kilojoules because it's more usable, especially when we go to work out the delta H. So to work out the delta H, the steps here are to first find the number of moles of ethanol, which would be mass over molar mass, so we can calculate the number of mole. Now the delta H formula is the energy in kilojoules divided by the number of moles and that's going to tell us the enthalpy of methanol in this reaction according to this data. So delta H is equal to energy which in this case is our Q but with our kilojoules and then we need to divide that by our number of mole. So we've got our energy which was 4.29 kilojoules we divide that by the mole, which was 7.18 by 10 to the negative 3, and that's going to give us our value for delta H. Now, our value for delta H is negative because the temperature has increased, so we've got negative 597 kilojoules per mole. If the temperature went down, we would have a positive enthalpy. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you next time.